Hey everybody, welcome Brad, welcome Kelsey, welcome Joe. Um, I just wanted to let y'all know that we'll be starting the official broadcast in just a minute or so, just to give people time to get signed in and whatnot. But in the meantime, if you want to put where you're tuning in from and what you had for breakfast in the chat, please feel free to. And we'll get started in just a minute. Thank you so much. Hi, Joanne, welcome. And just a reminder for anybody that just hopped on, we'll be starting our broadcast in just a couple of minutes just to give some more folks time to hop on. But in the meantime, tell us where you're coming from in the chat and we'll see you soon. All right, folks, so for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and get started while a couple more people hop on and join us. So hi, welcome to today's webinar, Increasing Driver and Subdriver Retention. Uh, my name is Janessa. I'm our community manager here. And before we get started, I'd just like to go over how you can participate in today's event. We're super excited that you've joined us. Uh, right now, everyone is in listen-only mode, but in the right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a questions box. Um, we encourage you to ask questions during the webinar or share your thoughts and we'll be sure to get your questions addressed during or at the end of the presentation. Part of what we're doing here is being a community that can help each other out. So if you've got thoughts, additional suggestions, things that you hear during the webinar, techniques that you've seen work, please feel free to put them in there for the benefit of all. Um, and just a reminder as well, we will be sending you the full webinar and slides after the event. Um, so please keep an eye out in your email for that and let me know um, if you don't see that in your inbox at least um, any time after 24 hours after this live event. So while we get started, I just would like to take a second to introduce our two amazing panelists today, Mr. Jeff Walker. Um, Mr. Jeff began his career in student transportation as a bus driver in 1999. Since then, he's worked as a dispatcher, router, director, and consultant. And as you can see on the screen, he's also had the pleasure of working with student transportation operations, ranging all the way from eight buses to 120, 400 students to 23,000 students, and six square miles to 1,222 square miles, which is a pretty big range. <laughs> Currently, he owns and operates Northern Express Bus Service, and he is, if I dare say, a self-professed routing nerd. Um, and he's awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us, Mr. Jeff. Do you want to say hi for a sec? You're, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Looking forward to this. Awesome. And then I'll go ahead and introduce our other panelists, Mr. Tony. Uh, Mr. Tony Langhorn is an over two, I almost said 200. He's not that old, y'all. <laughs> an over 20 years school district veteran and spent 13 of those 20 years in transportation. Now, not only is he a strong advocate for transportation departments as a whole, but he's also a super strong advocate for all of the districts that he serves. He's continuously looking for ways to better train and empower district staff and make routing and transportation management an easier process for everyone. He most recently worked for Pinellas County School District in Florida, if you're familiar with it, and we're so blessed to have both of these two amazing men here with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for letting me introduce you and bra brag on you a little bit. Um, so I want to just get started with a question for you both. So 
one thing that we've seen a lot of here um, at Transact and just with our customers and in the current marketplace is that we're still hearing from districts and bus contractors across the country about a shortage of bus drivers and organizations are facing both retention and recruitment challenges. So I'd love to know, Mr. Jeff, how has Northern Express Bus been impacted in terms of driver turnover? What have you seen there? Our hardest part is that, you know, is finding qualified drivers. And over the years, we've seen our pool of drivers diminish, you know, significantly as almost everyone else has. Um, I think the, the terms of impact come from a variety of sources. It could be in here in Wisconsin, where we tend to lose drivers is our testing requirements. And, you know, every eight years, I've lost three drivers this year uh, alone so far to the renewal came up and they said, I'm not doing this anymore. And the, that part of it's gotten, you know, stricter and stricter. And while I'm all about safety, it's those requirements that are hindering us. Um, another issue, you know, that everyone faces is it takes a special person to drive a bus. And typically most people don't, you know, come in saying, Hey, I want to drive a bus today. And it's, uh, that's what I think our biggest challenges are. Absolutely. And Mr. Tony, when you were at Pinellas, how was the, how was your district affected by this? Uh, it was affected tremendously. I, I think uh, last year was probably the worst year that we've had in uh, decades, um, and at least as long as I've been with the district. Um, it, 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 it has to do with understanding that people are going to be there. There's always a lot of people needed. Um, you can never get enough bus drivers. Um, I can tell you that we we would start a class with maybe 20, 25 drivers. And uh, by the time that they get behind the wheel and working, we may have five or seven of those left. Um, so it's so it's really it's really um, it's really a major issue because not only those that are qualified, but those that stick around. Um, one of the things that we didn't have, we didn't have a policy uh, or a contract with the drivers at the time. So they would come in, get their CDL, and they would be gone to someplace else uh, with their CDL, free CDL. <laughs> and, that, and, and, that, and that happened quite often as well. Yeah, and I know that it's been like like we were you were saying as well, like just a a struggle for a lot of people, especially in like recent years. Um, there's never yeah. been like a huge abundance of drivers, but it's become even more of a challenge. Um, which is part of why we wanted to talk about this subject today, because I know both of you have done amazing work in terms of retaining the drivers that you have. Um, and Mr. Jeff, you had mentioned too, like this has been a really big struggle in terms of like renewals for drivers this year and whatnot for their for their requirements but i know in our practice session you had even talked about an instance this particular year where you had to let a couple of people go for the sake of retaining the rest and keeping the the team atmosphere strong can you talk a little bit about why you made that decision because it may seem counterintuitive to some folks uh, absolutely um I know last year was also one of the roughest years that I've had as well, as far as staffing goes. And I knew that, you know, we had a few bad apples, we'll say, and as far as our morale went. And interestingly enough, uh, a few of them quit over the summer. And it was a blessing and a curse at the same time, because do we need, you know, uh, people to fill the, the seats and the routes? Yes, absolutely. But at the same time, I was also watching what these people were doing to my really good ones as well and bringing down the morale and possibly causing good ones that were contemplating do i stay or do i go and when these drivers resigned over the summer it was all right thank you and best wishes um and what we found this year is that it paid off are we still short yes absolutely um and do we need more yes but our morale is back up this year our gossip and our drama is down significantly from what it was last year. And overall, everyone that's here seems happier and therefore more likely to keep on trying to recruit for us. 
Absolutely. And I know you had even said like you're in you're in the bus driving more days than not, but it's still one of the best years you've had in terms of staff morale. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I keep joking that uh, I've been on my morning route since the first day of school and my afternoon route since sometime in October. And this is the uh, longest that I've been on my own route since uh, my junior year of college. So normally I've always been a sub and been bounced around. So and that too, I, I look at that um, where I'm getting a little bit different perspective where this is, like I said, the longest that I've been on a route in a long, long time. So I'm taking that as well as this is a learning opportunity for me as well, because I'm not used to being a regular route driver. I'm used to being a sub and seeing what it's like for to have the same route day in and day out. So it's, um, like I said, it's been overall just a, a great year despite the shortage. Absolutely. And I know something else that you had touched on previously, too, was that part of what helps you relate to drivers and help them like stay happy on your team, too, is being able to relate to them on like a day to day level because you've been in so many different roles throughout the route, um, throughout like the transportation management like sphere. Can you talk a little bit about why that's been helpful for you in, in retaining drivers? First and foremost, I think it's just the fact that the drivers see me out there driving with them and they know that I'm behind the wheel of a bus and not just behind the desk. Uh, they know that I've worked my way up from driver to dispatcher to router to director and now, you know, owner of the company. And they, I think that speaks volumes to them when they see me out there with them and they know that I'm a part of the team and not just you know in the office all the time. Um, one of my previous districts I used to work at, the uh, director prior to me never drove a bus. And the the staff was just in shock when they saw me as the new incoming director behind the wheel of the bus out there driving with them. And that day alone, I remember it, we saw morale, a, a change in morale and that it went up. Then when it comes to discipline as well, I can take the uh, factors into account of okay, this might've happened on the bus and how you handled it was inappropriate, but what were the factors that led up to it and relate to them on it versus trying to discipline or train or correct a behavior that I have no relation with whatsoever. Absolutely. And Mr. Tony, I could see you nodding along there as well. I know that's something that you've, you've spoken pretty strongly about is that being visible as the leader or as someone that's, that's, managing folks has been huge for you. Can you speak a little bit to that part of your story and why that mattered so much for people to be able to see you? Yeah, one one of the things that um, that I found to be invaluable for the drivers is like what Jeff was saying is being visible. Um, I can I can I can tell you that it it makes a big difference in their day and not only being visible but also recognizing them at the same time. Um, whenever, whenever I was within close proximity, I just call it my five foot rule. If I come within five foot of you, I'm going to tell you how much I appreciate what you do. And every, every, every driver that, that I came in contact with, I would always say, thank you for the hard work that you're doing. You make the impossible possible. And that, that causes a lot of uh, the drivers to realize that they are appreciated. And it, 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 even if it just gets them to the point of getting up one more day, I'm good with that. Um, because the, the recognition part of, of being a driver, it's very slim and far between. Um, there, there were several, uh, several instances where I, I, um, was given the responsibility of retention, but I could not take on that responsibility as well as safety and as well as technology and as well as customer service and all of the other things that I was involved with. So I, I would make sure that if I did anything, I would make sure that I was in contact with them and having the supervisors readily available and the director is critical 
in being present and where where the drivers are. There's some times where it's good to just be there early in the morning. They roll out sometimes at quarter to five in the morning. That director standing there and, and greeting them and that builds the morale with with the uh, team and they go to work and and have a good time doing it and come back smiling. I love that. And Mr. Jeff, I could see you nodding along there as well. I know that something that you've talked about is having a culture of appreciation and the how far just a simple thank you can go as well. Can you speak a little bit to how you've seen that happen on your teams? And I know you've even talked about how you experienced a culture in previous workplaces where it wasn't like, it was just like 10-4, I got it. But instead, what the difference that a thank you makes? Uh, the it, In the majority of the districts across the country, especially with them being you know smaller, very few of these of these drivers do it for the money and especially in my area right now where they only get two and a half to three hours a day and they don't have the opportunity for more they're not here for the money they're here for the appreciation they're here for serving the community they're here for the kids and i mean the appreciation factor is just huge um one of the things that we do for example is uh right when you come on board you get your company hat uh, a ten dollar hat will make their day and they just they absolutely love it and they they uh you know wear them like a badge of honor um they get their winter coats their first year for christmas a few weeks ago i uh i bought them hoodies for the first time and they thought it was the best thing ever and i mean just seeing all that like i said they really do do wear it with pride um appreciation week we you know we go all out they get gift cards and um, various activities. We try to do breakfasts and, and meals and get them all together. Um, it's, it's the little things that, that go a long way for them. And then you had mentioned the, um, the thank yous and the lesson that I'd, I learned years ago was we had, uh, multiple terminals on, on one radio channel where I drove. Well, my terminals morale was extremely low and if we got uh, acknowledgement on the radio, it was 10-4, 10-4 versus the terminal next to us. Uh, hearing them, it was 10-4, thank you, we appreciate it. 10-4, can you run back and get that? Uh, you know, can you swing by and pick this up? You know, things like that. It was just, it was, you had got the opportunity to hear it, you know, right, literally side by side. And it was night and day difference of how the terminal next door was appreciated versus how we were appreciated. Absolutely. And I know that you had mentioned too that some people even were like, Mr. Jeff, you talk so much on the radio. Like, why are you doing that? But you mentioned too that it's worth it because even just taking that little extra bit of time has made such a big difference for your team. Absolutely. You know, I joke that I would not be a good 911 dispatcher because I try to be to the point. But I mean, every time when the drivers are signing out in the morning, it's 10 4, good morning. Uh, when they call in, if they help out, 10-4, thank you. When they sign off at night, 10-4, have a good evening, have a good weekend. Uh, and every single one of them. And, I mean, they they always almost, you know, chime in and, and right back at me as well. And I tell you, there's times that I get tired of saying, 10-4, I will. But, hey, I do it because it's the acknowledgement between us. And, uh, like I said, it just it goes a long way. And there's a huge difference in, in how they're treated. Absolutely. And Mr. Tony, I know that you had mentioned like it's not all about the money, it's about the recognition. How have you seen that kind of differ from like what you're able to do in a union environment versus like what someone could do in a non-union environment? Have you seen a difference there? Yeah, with with uh, with Pinellas while I was there, um, it, being being unionized, it's it's pretty much controlled when it comes down to. The money um, they do their negotiations with the school board and pretty much whatever they come out of that room with is what everyone gets. Um, but it it really it they, I can I can tell you that in my discussions with multiple drivers, it it has never been the money. Now when you walk up to them, they'll say something like, "Well, when are you going to give us more money? When are you going to give us more money?" But then when you sit down and you have a conversation with them, you ask, what, what, what matters most to you? 
you know, if they would just recognize us for what we are doing, that's all that we need is just recognition for what we're doing. And and one of the things that, that I used to say is we have to pay attention to the small things. Those are the things that are important. The things that when you're talking about a large school district, because we had 600 buses in our fleet and transported uh, anywhere from, uh, th well, it was 30,000, 33,000 at one point, and it went down to 28 after COVID. But with, with dealing with a large fleet, you have to pay attention to the small things in order to uh, retain the drivers because they really love what they do. Now it's a matter of, okay, am I appreciated for what I do? They get it from some of the schools, not all of them, um, but what about from the family, from the family where we work? What about that family? Do, do we get anything from our own family is the way that they see it. That makes a lot of sense. So some themes that I'm hearing come out of this is that the little things are so important, um, especially in terms of appreciation. A thank you can go a long way. And then also sincerity. And I know that we talked about this as well. Like both of you two are two of the most sincere and amazing people that I know. Um, and Mr. Jeff, I know that I had asked you about this before, um, and you'd said that sincerity, like you can only be one way, like <laughs> it's just who you are is when you're thanking someone, you're truly thanking them. Why, uh, you had said it comes down to one thing. Can you, can you speak a little bit about like why that matters, the sincerity in it and, and what propels you to do that for your team? Uh, that one's easy. It's just the golden rule and treat everyone how you want to be treated. And I look back at some of my jobs of how I was treated and don't want to treat drivers that way. And at the same time, I just want to make sure that they're, they know that they're valued, they're, they're respected and they're appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mr. Tony, anything to add to that? Um, I think he said it well. <laughs> I think you said it very, very well. Um, if, if, if uh, now some some can take that a little differently because some uh, do not want to have a certain type of treatment, but it's really looking at what what would what would you like to see come back to you? Um, if if you give out a smile, guess what's going to come back to you? A smile. Um, if you give out rain and thunder, you guess what's coming back? It's rain and thunder. It's not going to be anything joyful. Um, and that's, that's, that's one of the key things that uh, I found with, uh, with the staff at uh, Pinellas is that they would always know if they saw me, they saw joy. If, 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 if there was anything going on, it was always guaranteed that if, if I walked into an environment or if I stepped into anywhere, I'm smiling, even to the point where I would hear from people saying, you know, um, that, that person is really a mean person. She's always frowning. She's all, and, and I'd say to them, I've never seen her frown. Every time I've seen her, she's smiling. And that's because you give out what you receive. Absolutely. And that's, that's great wisdom. And what I'm hearing from what I'm hearing you say there too, is like, it really starts at the top. So like the leadership sets the tone for what the rest of the team is going to do. And I know that's easier said than done in a lot of instances, because like, y'all are going to have bad days too. There's times where you're like, waking up on the wrong side of the bed, and you're like, I just don't want to deal with this. Is any advice for folks that are like on the bad days, what, what keeps you motivated to help your team and make sure that like you, you are the tone and the culture setter for them? It's, it's really, uh, it's really realizing that we're all in this together and we're all trying to accomplish one thing and that's getting the, the beautiful children to and from school safely, effectively, and efficiently. And we're all, we're all aiming at that one thing. Um, I, 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 I did hear you say, wake up uh, on the wrong side of the bed. 
<laughs> every morning waking up is on the wrong side of the bed <laughs> because that sleep feels real good. <laughs> and that and 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 also the uh, pillow. Um, there are there are a host of things when I think about driver retention, there are so many different things that could go into that. Um, I think that we've been really focused in on the most important one that we all can impact right away. Um, and it doesn't require money. It doesn't require any time or effort. It's just being the good person that you are. Because if you're in transportation, you're a good person. There's no doubt about it. There, there, there are not many folks that would volunteer to do what we do. And I've had several occasions where people have said, you know, what do you what do you do? I said, I work for Pinellas County Schools Transportation Department. Oh, I'd never do that. <laughs> Transporting those kids to and from school? No way. And you have a driver that has two to three classrooms on a bus makes a huge impact on their lives and how they do. They are the beginning of the process and we have to appreciate them for being the beginning of the education process. Absolutely. Anything to add to that, Mr. Jeff? I have a saying that's fake it till you make it on those days. And uh, what I have found with my staff though is uh, honestly getting around them. If I do wake up you know, on the wrong side of the bed, getting around my staff usually helps pull, you know, pull me out of it. And this year I'm, uh, I start at one terminal and then move to the next one. And so I get to see uh, two of them at, at one time. And they said, it's, uh, they definitely help pull me out of those funks. And um, so like I said, fake it till you make it. And when you get around them, then usually it puts me back in a better mood. Absolutely. And that to me makes me think of what you were talking about in terms of like the morale affects not just your team as a whole, but you as the team, the the person who's who's overseeing your team too, um, which kind of brings us around to the, the thought of recruitment and like who you're bringing into your team, how you're doing that. Um, and I know that we promised folks that we'd talk about retention and recruitment. And Mr. Jeff, you've had some really good ideas of like how you do this and it, they haven't always been traditional, like putting an ad out or something like that. Can you talk to us a little bit about what approaches have you taken to driver recruitment for, for Northern Bus Express or in your past district lives as well? Well, it's different now with owning them because uh, get to make the decisions and versus um, working, you know, with the district or for, for somebody else where you're bound by board procedure. So our biggest recruitment method right now is word of mouth. I found that advertising does not work. Um, the $400 ad in the newspaper typically brings in no one where we get it from is, is word of mouth. Um, I'm a firm believer in birds of a, of a feather flock together. And so encouraging our staff to bring their friends and their family in. And what we do is we're offering a thousand dollar referral bonus right now. And so every once you're on our staff, then and if you bring somebody in, as soon as they're certified, your referral bonus starts paying out 30 days after. Uh, I also pay it out in four $250 increments. So that way, if for some reason it doesn't work out, and the person doesn't last 90 or 120 days, they're not out that bonus as well, which is which encourages them to keep recruiting people. It happens to a lot of people. As Tony said, you, know, you get a class of 10, you're lucky to get five out of it. And uh, I read a statistic a long time ago that uh, out of that 10, three of them may be driving 90 days later. And with how we do the referral bonus, they at least get something for their effort. And and keep it coming in. Now, we've been fortunate that everybody that's been recruited this way so far is still driving yet, uh, but it that seems to work out really well. Um, I am, you see these companies that are offering sign-on bonuses right now and, you know, big ones up to, I've seen three, four, five thousand dollar ones. We don't do sign-on bonuses. Uh, we, I have an issue with that, that I feel I've got all these hardworking people that are with me day, you know, day by day, minute by minute. And why is it fair that they're here working so hard and somebody comes in fresh off the street and gets a $3,000 sign-on bonus just to get them behind the door 
or behind the wheel, I should say, in the door behind the wheel. Um, uh, this day, the staff and I have talked quite a bit about this, and they're grateful for that piece of it. Now, at the same time, the new recruit, we do offer uh, a training bonus for them as well for their training time and for their license. So they're compensated as well. But our existing crew becomes the biggest part of how we, we, we uh, recruit drivers. So that that's really interesting because I know that that's kind of a, a spicy take for some people because I've even seen like all the big signs on the buses around the streets where I live where it's like $5,000 sign on bonus if you like if you start driving with us today, et cetera. Um, so it's interesting to hear that that actually hasn't been a good approach for some places. Um, and it sounds like too, from what I'm hearing you say, that keeping the morale within your staff and actually using them as your mouthpieces, even like having them sort of like advertise through through the swag items and things that they get and stuff because they're proud to work for you has been really successful for you. Is that is that true? Absolutely. Um, I had to go the other day. I was buying their gift cards for appreciation week and I've learned that I always wear my company apparel whenever I'm doing this. And because you tend to stick out, you know, when you're buying 75 gift cards at one time. And but, people ask, well, what are you doing? I'm like, um, oh, these are for the staff. It's for, you know, appreciation week. And, uh, you know, oh, then they look at my, my sweatshirt or my coat and, oh, where is, oh, maybe I should come and apply. I had three of them last week when I was doing this talk about it. I haven't seen them yet, but I'll be optimistic that, you know, maybe they will come in. And either way, that seed is planted now that, you know, this is a great place to work and maybe it is a right fit for them someday. Absolutely. Mr. Tony, have you seen word of mouth? Was that some a big method of recruitment at, at Pinellas? Was there other methods that worked for y'all? Um, well, they, they did uh, throw some extra money out there. Um, the school board did. Um, they threw some extra money out there and that brought in quite a few more applications than what they were seeing. Um, but one of the, the successful things that, that we did use and are still using are the actual drivers. And uh, we would actually have the drivers doing the recruiting. They would be at malls, they would be at fairs, they would um, be at um, the local um, employment office. Um, they would be at, there were other organizations that were connected with recruiting uh, for different jobs throughout the county, and they would always be plugged in with them, as well as getting information from resources. Um, their LinkedIn um, is, is a big one that, that is used, um, as, but the, the most effective one is having the drivers going out and doing the recruiting they would have their tables or they would park the bus with the sign on it now hiring uh drivers and uh they would they would tell the drivers of their experience and then sell them on knowing that they would go through training and be paid while they're going through training and then once they've completed training they would get a raise at that point as well as their benefits kicking in. Um, so it was it was quite a few things that they used in Pinellas to be able to make the recruitment a whole lot easier. A referral bonuses, like Jeff was saying, they tried that and it it didn't really do as much as when they had the uh, drivers out recruiting and they would give them a special shirt. They'd have these beautiful bright yellow shirts uh, for Pinellas County Schools transportation, and they would be out at the malls and everywhere uh, recruiting people. And nothing like hearing a testimony from somebody that's doing it and have been doing it for a while. Word of mouth is the best advertisement for anything. And Mr. Jeff, it looked like you were you were nodding along there, like you were about to say something. Absolutely. I mean, and, and Tony nailed it with the testimonial. I mean, hearing from an existing driver and how much they love the job or what they like or even what they don't like about it is huge. When you look at how uh, 
media, you know, portrays drivers, it's not good. You know, movies, TV shows, things like that. We're not portrayed the best. And then you've got mainstream media that usually when it makes the news, it's not good as well. So unless people know of what's going on and what it's really like, uh, when you know nothing about it, that's all you're going to see is how it's portrayed. So hearing from, you know, and as somebody who's actually doing it every day makes a huge difference. Yeah. And, and, and from, from the staffing part and the management piece, it is so important that we promote the professionalism of each driver. Um, because because of all of the stigmas that are out there regarding school bus drivers, a lot of them do not feel as though they are professionals. And I look at them and, and I say, one thing you've got to realize, in order for you to get behind the wheel of that bus, you have to get a professional license. And you have to maintain your lifestyle to maintain that professional license. So you are a professional and being able to promote that with the drivers and letting them see that you know that they are professionals and also working with the schools and letting the schools know that these, that these drivers that come to their schools are professionals and to be treated in a professional manner as well because some sometimes when they arrive at the schools they're not treated in a professional manner now there are some schools that really do but a lot of the schools do not and so changing changing that image is really what it's all about absolutely, absolutely. and that's one thing too i mean we go into i in fact i don't even like the term bus driver our staff here is student transporters and I always joke with them that if you want to be a bus driver and just drive the bus, go next door. If you want to be a professional and be a student transporter and manage your students, manage your vehicle, manage yourself, then come and work here. Beautiful. I love that. And thank you guys so much for, I, I had never even thought of that, that like even just like the naming around it, like that there is such a stigma around it. And so like giving them the confidence that like they are a professional, what they do is incredibly important. And I know that I see like, you know, it, it's February, so it's like love the bus month. So there's like all of these things about like, we love our bus drivers, et cetera. But it's one month out of a whole year like that it can really take its toll on you so that having that encouragement from leadership and then also i loved what you said mr tony as well about like making sure that the rest of the staff knows too that's not in transportation that like they are professionals and that they matter um and that their work matters i bet that really helps um i just love hearing from y'all both of y'all are amazing <laughs> one thing i did want to bring up is i know that um, for recruitment purposes, like at, we've taught, we've touched on recruitment, we've touched on retention. Um, I know that one thing that can really affect driver, um, morale and recruitment efforts as well is just like the day-to-day -day operations. And it's not uncommon to hear that. I know you experienced this, Mr. Jeff, where like you had people that were just sitting there because like they were just watching the scroll of doom for forever. Um, so that can, the technology, the things that they use on a day-to-day -day basis can really affect how they feel about it and whether they want to come back to work. So, Mr. Jeff, you're currently using a Transax routing system at Northern Express Bus. Um, and Tony, you were planning to implement it at Pinellas Planet prior to when you left the district. Uh, Mr. Jeff, how does the routing system impact your day-to-day -day operations in terms of managing the drivers? Have you seen, like, morale go up over that? Uh, we have, and we've only got a few minutes left, so I got to keep this short because there's so much I want to say. Uh, we have, because obviously the drivers need to know where they're going and what they're doing. They truly, I believe, want to do the best that they can for you. And part of that is giving them the tools to do the job, you know, their job effective, uh, effectively. Um, the biggest thing that, you know, where Transact has come into play is the ease of use on it and that we can provide them with accurate directions and accurate times, accurate stops, student information, and they know what they're doing. Uh, the student information, for example, is huge because if they know who's on their buses, 
that helps them with student discipline and not only student discipline, but medical issues or things like that. Uh, it blows my mind how many districts don't use routing software and uh, how these drivers are just given maybe a list of stops and told, here you go, figure it out on your own. I can't imagine doing that to any one of our staff. Um, Transact has definitely given us the tools and the ease to give them what they need to do their jobs properly and, and make it easier on them. Absolutely. And I know that this, like I said at the beginning, you're a little bit of a self-professed routing nerd. And, oh, yeah. and like I would say it, I would call it an expert. Some people would call it a nerd. We'll call it both. Um, I what are geek. You, a geek. I love that as well. Um, so if, if someone were looking for something that would make their day to day operations like easier, what would you suggest like as like kind of a like a, a, a mental checklist, if you will, to keep in mind of like what's going to help your drivers and yourself like on a day to day basis in like what you're looking for in the software? Uh, it's thinking about functionality and uh, what tools do your drivers, your dispatchers, your routers, your supervisors need. And each one's got different levels, we'll say, of uh, different needs based on what their position is. And I would say, you know, for drivers, it's accurate directions and times and stops. For dispatching and routing, it's uh, being able to integrate with the school district and getting their data right from them so you're not doing duplicate entry. And for the admin side of things, you need to be able to quickly and easily see the big picture of what's really going on in your department or within your company. And uh, Transact offers all of that. Well, awesome. Also, y'all, I didn't pay him to say any of that. Just wanna just wanna let, let you know as well. Um, but I appreciate it nonetheless. We love you, Mr. Jeff. Um, Mr. Tony, what have you seen um, when you were at Pinellas and and to this day, what have you seen work well in terms of like tools, everyday tools in your day-to-day -day operations and how that's affected your drivers? Yeah, the, the routing software is the heartbeat of transportation. Um, that, that is, and uh, knowing, knowing what I know, um, because I was responsible for all of the technology um, within the transportation department, that is the heartbeat. And if that is off, then everything else is off. Um, and, 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 and so having good, efficient routing software is a key to uh, having success on the road. Um, if you have uh, good route sheets coming out of the software um, with, with good times, um, which which are critical for the drivers because they're on a minute by minute basis, and if they get something that tells them they're supposed to be there at 7:15, and then they're supposed to be at the next stop at 7:18, but it's 20 minutes away, you know, the drivers get disgruntled by that because they they say you all need to get your software together. Um, it's very very critical, and then with the GPS solution from uh, looking, at, looking at it from an administrative point of view, for the drivers, they love the GPS solution. I was, I was told that the drivers would be upset if we put GPS on all the buses. And once we did it, they loved it because they could easily tell a parent, well, you need to call this number. And then they would call us and, and we would say, yes, that driver was there at such and such a time and they left at this time. So having accurate data in your GPS system is critical. If you, if you have a GPS system that is, um, is not accurate, you know, it's, it's got a seven minute update. You don't need that. You, you need something that is real time that is going to give you the information that you need right away. Absolutely. And I'm just curious, Mr. Tony, why why was there a, a fear of the drivers not wanting the GPS in the buses? Was it because like a thought that like, oh, they wouldn't they'd be felt like they wouldn't know where their routes were or like they didn't need it? What? No, it's Big Brother watching us. That's what it was. Okay. And I ex and, and I explained to them, I said, I'm going to I'm going to tell you the truth we don't have enough time to watch you 
<laughs> There's a lot more <laughs> work to, be done to. And watch you. <laughs> and 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 we also used it as a coaching tool for the drivers as well, because some of the drivers would 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 come back to the compounds and they would ask, um, well, you know, I was I was doing this, but I, I think there may be a way I can do it a little bit better. And then the supervisor would pull up the GPS data and say, Yeah, you can actually take this this road because the driver does not really have that local knowledge yet and the supervisor can use it as a coaching tool for them and there's multiple multiplicity of different things that they can use the gps system for i love that and that's a really good perspective to have as well um yeah. and mr tony i'm gonna ask you a more direct question as well because you've you've oh picked this I know. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Uh, so, what would you say to a peer who might be considering a Transact or Easy Routing, which is what Transact uses as their routing solution? What would you tell them if they were considering it? And they were like, I don't, I don't know. What would I, what would I tell them? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the old saying, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, there, there is uh, so much that that is in easy routing, and I, I, I just call it easy transportation because it, it really is a solid product. One of the one of the main things that, and this is my own, uh, you didn't pay me for this. Um, one of one of the one of the things that that we had as a major issue, and I, and I know it's throughout the the industry is knowing what child is on what bus going to what school because of all of the substitutions there there has uh, i i have yet to see a product other than easy transportation that provides that type of support for you to be able to know because they have a dispatcher module for the substitutions that tell you exactly which bus this child goes on and not only that but be able to communicate that to the parents as well and and with the with the uh, routing solution gives the planned information so now the director will have a good feel for what is my actual on-time arrival instead of having to sit for weeks or days calculating, okay, this bus arrived at this time and then having a spreadsheet and trying to manipulate all of the data. That's what I would tell them. You are getting the best thing since sliced bread because of everything that works well together. It's a total solution. That's awesome. And I, I love that the best thing since sliced bread. I feel like people use that, but I, I really like it. Um, a quick question for y'all as well. So um, we're gonna we're gonna start our Q and A portion because I want to make sure that we get audience questions in that we can get everyone um, that's got perspectives on here we can understand. Um, so we're gonna open it up for for folks. If you've got questions, please go ahead and put them in the questions box, um, and we'll use this time, uh, Mr. Jeff and Mr. Tony, to uh, answer some of those questions. Okay. Awesome, Blossom. And I do have one so far. Um, so I just wanted to ask, so this question is how, given the evolving landscape of like transportation technology and whatnot, how do you integrate technology solutions while ensuring they complement rather than replace the human aspect of driver recruitment and retention? Because I know that obviously the human aspect has made a lot of difference and I feel like this touches a little bit on AI. So maybe this is a curveball question, but what would y'all say if people are trying, cause you know, busy people doing a lot with not, you know, like you said, Mr. Tony, making the impossible possible. What would you say about kind of marrying the two together? How would that work? It, it, for, for me, I see it, it really, the technology is a communication tool. Um, what it, what it does is, is, is it brings everyone on the same page. So if you have a recruitment uh, 
process and in, in your district, you're using the technology to track each person that's coming through uh, the process. And not only do you have the information, but anyone else that needs access to it will have it. Human resources, the director, um, the uh, training supervisor, everyone has this, all of the information about this person that's coming through the process. And it also streamlines the process. Um, it doesn't take away the human interaction. It's really a communication tool that, that, that is able to get information. You can put it in one place and multiple entities can access that information, payroll included, um, all of the entities that are part of that entire process. Absolutely. Mr. Jeff, anything to add to that? Yeah, one more perk to it too is that if you've got a streamlined training program, you know, it's in modules, um, mm -hmm. it helps out too. And as Tony mentioned, where everyone's on the same page. And so let's say the the recruit has been working with trainer Joe, you know, and for about four or five days, but now he's out and uh, trainer Jim wants to jump in. If they have the tools to look in and see where that recruit is at, they can pick up and keep the process going versus losing a day of training just because that one trainer is out. Yep. That's awesome. I love that. And I love that they'll, they'll be able, you know, to have multiple people working in the process without like having to redo because I know even for me like if I have to redo things in a job that I'm first training for then I just like why am I here what am I doing um that is valuable yeah. it's what it comes down to everyone's time is valuable and that's what it comes down to that's right absolutely yeah sorry Mr. Tony I didn't mean to interrupt you there no I said that that is that is correct that is correct every everyone's time is valuable uh, because when I don't I don't know about anyone else, but when you walk into the office from the moment you walk in until you leave, you are doing something in transportation. There, there's there's no there's no downtime. You know, some some would think, oh, you got time to sit around and no, you have lunch. Here you are, thirty minutes. Okay, sometimes you don't even have that. <laughs> sometimes you're just going the entire day and you may go through a whole week and say wow i missed lunch this day this day <laughs> and and it and it's because we're all busy and the time is valuable so that's why i see it as a communication tool and really as a viable tool to get the job done and get it done more effectively i love that yeah and it is so true. And speaking of time being valuable, I'll make sure that I think we've just got one more question here. Um, this one I'm really interested in. I think it's a good question. Considering the diverse needs and preferences of drivers, how do you tailor your recruitment and retention strategies to accommodate different demographics, such as young drivers entering the workforce or older drivers seeking flexible retirement? Mr. Jeff, I know that you've got quite a quite a a variety of people that you've been able to have on your workforce. Can you speak a little bit to this question? We definitely don't have a one size fits all uh, recruiting approach. I mean, we're our draw right now where we're seeing more is the stay at home moms and dads where uh, talk them into coming to drive, whether it be bringing their uh, younger children with them on the bus to save daycare expenses or gas expenses to a full time job. Uh, we're trying to do a flexibility recruitment as well, where you don't have to drive Monday through Friday, AM and PM. You can drive a few days a year. You can drive 180 days out of the year. Uh, we're also doing the um, recruiting to like the retirees as well and, and the part-timers and trying to showcase everyone that we make this job work for you. You don't have to work for us and, and just catering around what does work for them. And have you seen that be successful in bringing different people in? Like oh, absolutely. More? Absolutely. Uh, the number one misconception that I hear is, uh, you mean I don't have to drive AM and PM Monday through Friday? Absolutely not. We've got routes there if you want them. But other than that, we write your own schedule. And we are seeing the draw to both the uh, part-time sub drivers and, like I said, the, the younger uh, stay-at-home moms and dads, as well as the retirees, which is traditional. 
That's awesome. And Mr. Choney, I'm curious to know in, in a union environment where you've got like a set number of like hours and things that you have to fulfill, how are, are there are there flexible options that you can offer to help reach some of these different demographics that you've seen work? Yeah, pretty much what, what Jeff said. I mean, we offered um, we offered part time as well as full time. And with our full time drivers, they were guaranteed six hours. Um, no matter if their route was four hours, they still got paid six hours. Um, and um, as as far as the um, as far as the yeah, that thought went whoo, just <laughs> right. It went right past it my ear. To me every day. <laughs> Yeah, it went right past my ear and hid right behind my ear, and I, I can't see it or hear it. Um, but it is it is uh, basically what what Jeff was saying. Um, it, it 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 it's really the full time part time positions are available, um, and uh, there are some that drive AM, some that drive just PM, some that drive AM and PM, and then there are there are the uh, the folks that that really um, come in because they want insurance or there's folks that, that want a, a little extra money. Um, we had we had world champion power lifter that was one of our bus drivers. You know, he was, he traveled all over the world doing power lifting and he was a world champion. He was behind the wheel. We had retired um, captains from the Air Force. You know, it, it's really, there is no one size fit all. It's really, uh, I think, I think the acronym was W I I F M. What's in it for me? And if you identify what's in it for them, then they're they're more than happy to to come on board. It's really what is it? What is it that you're looking for? And how can we get that for you? We don't. We want to do it around you, not. Uh, you do it for us. We want to do it around you. I think that's the same thing Jeff said, right? <laughs> Similar. Great out there. Great take on it, though. I loved the addition of the acronym. And I'm curious from, I'll start with Mr. Jeff. So with, with what both you and Mr. Tony were saying, have you seen that, like, being able to communicate that like what's in it for them and and talk to their peers about what like it's not just like a promise from someone but it's a promise that they've seen kept over the course of their employment there have you seen that really help with like retention with recruitment like oh, absolutely. They... Oh. Um, definitely with retention um, the when I started this company six years ago the majority of our staff is still here yet from you know from who came on six years ago, um, previous and previous jobs. I mean, we had some drivers that were driving for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, I think that all of that definitely plays into a part of why they drive so long and why they stay here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I could see you nodding along, Mr. Tony, anything to add there? Yeah. With, with, when it comes down to the retention piece and, and the driver understanding, one of the one of the uh, things that I used to used to say to them is, you know, when you came on board at Pinellas County Schools, there was a promise made, and that promise that was made to you was that you had this job description, and that job description you looked at it, you read through it, you applied for it, and you got the job. Pinellas County Schools said we will give you this if you do that and I, and I always say to them i say ask yourself this have they met what they said they were going to do did they miss a paycheck for you if they did then they broke their promise if they did not now you have to ask yourself this question am i fulfilling my end of it based on what that job description says and and i i don't know about any other districts out there but i know in pinellas they have right at the bottom of every job description and other duties as assigned <laughs> so there is no that ain't my job <laughs> 
I love that. Well, thank you both so much. I'm going to leave the question box open just in case we have any last minute questions come in for the Q&A. But in the meantime, I wanted to give everyone the opportunity really quick. Um, something that we're really interested in here is making sure that we provide value to your day. Um, I know that both Mr. Jeff and Mr. Tony touched on like time is valuable and that includes the time that you've spent with us. And so we really appreciate it. And one thing we'd love to know before you leave is um, what additional topics or insights would you like to see covered in future webinars or resource? Um, and there's a little spot there where it says something else. I'll comment my idea. Please do let us know if it's something else and you're like, yeah, you didn't get it there. Because um, again, we want to make this time as, as impactful and valuable for you as possible. Um, and I would just like to say thank you so much again to Mr. Jeff and Mr. Tony. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I hope everybody can have bosses like them, people that care about them, people that inspire them to do better, because I know even just being around them for the time that I have, I'm inspired to do better. So thank you both so much. I'll leave the poll open for just a little bit longer, I'll leave the question box open if anyone has any last minute questions. But just as a reminder too, we'll be sending out the slides after this, as well as the recording. Um, there may be a 24-hour delay. I will try and get it to you faster than that. I can only go so fast, though, but I promise you will have it in your inbox um, from me personally, so don't you worry. Awesome. Well, if you need to hop, please do. Um, if you haven't filled out the poll yet, please do before you head out, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. And I am going to go ahead and end the poll now, if that's okay. Awesome. Blossom.